Welcome back. Viral hepatitis B and C affect about 325 million people globally, but about 9 in 10 living with viral hepatitis are unaware. According to the World Health Organization, these are chronic infections that may not show symptoms for a long period, sometimes years or even decades. Now, ahead of World Hepatitis Day tomorrow, which focuses on testing, treatment and the elimination of the condition, we're joined by Dr. Eric Wee, a gastroenterologist at the Nobel Gastroenterology Center. Eric, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Let's talk about the WHO target, uh, which really is to eliminate Hep B and C as public health threats by 2030. Uh, give us a sense of how realistic that goal is and how near or far away we are from that goal. So when we talk about public health threat, we're talking about the incidence and how many new cases are found every year. We're currently for hepatitis B and hepatitis C, there are globally about 6 to 10 million new cases reported every year. And one of the objectives of the WHO is to reduce this to less than a million new cases a year. In Singapore, the bigger problem is hepatitis B and the smaller problem is hepatitis C. For, so for hepatitis B, we can reduce the prevalence and the new cases of hepatitis B through vaccination. And we have a very good childhood vaccination program where it's compulsory to vaccinate. So one of the things that this vaccination program has done is to actually reduce the incidence of hepatitis B um, among our younger population. So a study was published several years ago which looked at children from the age of 1 to 17 years old and it found that the prevalence of hepatitis B in this age group was actually less than 1%. Mm. So that is actually a remarkable achievement. Other things that Singapore has been doing to achieve this goal is we screen all our blood products and, and we ensure that our equipment are sterile and we don't transmit hepatitis B and hepatitis C. We also have got new drugs that have come into the market for viral hepatitis C that can cure the infection. So if we identify patients with hepatitis C, a, a cure is possible for these people as well. Okay, you know, um, we mentioned earlier that 9 out of 10 people living with um, viral hepatitis, they're just unaware that they actually have it. So the question is, how tough is it to detect the symptoms? Now, the problem with viral hepatitis, both B and C, is that you can be totally symptom-free. If you, you can carry the virus within your liver and in your blood, and you can have no symptoms at all. However, when the symptoms appear, usually it means that you have advanced disease, or you have a flare of the condition, or you could even have liver cancer as well. And when that happens, then it is a bit difficult to reverse the condition. We can treat it, but there is a problem in the sense that the liver is already decompensated. So you may exhibit symptoms of lethargy or jaundice. And therefore, it's important to go for health screening. Mm. If you are at risk, then we consider screening people who have a higher risk of hepatitis B. For instance, if you have a family history of hepatitis B, then the family members should all go for screening for hepatitis B as well. If you are a dialysis patient, routinely these patients will get screened for hepatitis B as well. In people who use intravenous drugs in the past, we we'll consider screening for hepatitis C. Now, you mentioned earlier that, that Singapore very much is focused on, on Hep B, uh, specifically among the three varieties of hepatitis. Yes. Um, and that's despite even our younger generation uh, doing very well against Hep B because of those vaccinations. Yes. Uh, but further on, why does Hep B become a problem for the wider population? So hepatitis B is still a problem because we like the drugs that can cure the disease. So whoever has got the disease remains a carrier. Now we have got good drugs that can control the disease, but it's still a chronic illness as opposed to viral hepatitis C, where a cure is available, which means that you can actually cure a chronic condition and you're free of the illness completely. For hepatitis B, we can only prevent the transmission at this point in time. Now there's a lot of development going on in hepatitis B and it's quite exciting. We have seen in the last two to three years, uh, leaders, global leaders in research, in immunology, as well as pharmaceutical companies coming together to try and find and solve a cure for this hepatitis B problem. And we have currently, as far as I know, about 17 new drugs. They are in phase two clinical trials, which means they are about one to two steps away from, from being a successful drug that can be used to cure the disease. So hopefully in the next 10 years, we will find something that we can use to treat and cure and eradicate hepatitis mm. B. Okay. The you know, you mentioned there about transmission. So how is um, hepatitis B virus, you know, contracted? And, and how do we stop the spread? I mean, it sounds so, so simple, but how do you, you get it? Yeah, so hepatitis B is a blood-borne infection for which body fluids and blood can spread the infection. So you can get it through um, sexual intercourse. If you have blood transfusions and the blood's contaminated, you can get the infection. If you have equipment like needles that are tainted with the infection, you could get it as well. So 
Sometimes people go overseas to countries where sterility may be an issue, they get acupunctures or even dental treatment, and they come back with the infections. But the most common way hepatitis B is transmitted locally and in many Asian countries is not through blood-borne transfusion, it's actually through vertical transmission, which means from the mother to the mm. child at the point of delivery. What's good is that now with immunization, we can cut that risk of transmission lower, and we also have antiviral drugs that can be administered in the third trimester of pregnancy. So we risk stratifying pregnant women and those who have a very high viral load of hepatitis B in their blood, we can administer antiviral therapy to block the transmission so that the risk of the child acquiring the infection from the mother is mm. reduced. So things really looking up and especially if those uh, cures, uh, those drug cures for Hep B uh, come on stream. Eric, thanks very much for joining yes. us this evening. We've been speaking there with Dr. Eric Wee, specialist in gastroenterology at the Nobel Gastroenterology Centre.